Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to 285 Be With Me. And if you are listening contemporaneously with the publications of these podcasts, then this morning is Christmas morning. How great is that? So this is the Christmas podcast, but we're going to flip it on its ear, of course. That's what we do here. And we are going to talk about Christmas completed today. And we are going to answer the irritating drummer boy's question about what we can bring. And we're going to try to answer the question is, what present would Jesus like if he came down the stairs to the Christmas tree? What's the one present that would make him the happiest? And in today's passage, joy is talked about three times in seven verses. So we're going to Find out why. Why is there joy this morning? So Christmas generally is considered, and you get this even from the, the song, Joy to the World, the Savior's Come. We get the joy. So Christmas is that we rejoice that he has come. And Christmas completed, which is what I want to talk about today, is that he rejoices that we come. And that is, he gets the joy. And this passage is not really center-focused. It's actually the joy of the Lord-focused. We're supposed to be bringing him joy. We're going to find out today what pleases the Lord. What pleases the Lord. So let me read the passage. This is the parable of the lost sheep, Luke chapter 15, not your typical Christmas passage. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told him this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he has come home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. So let's talk for a second about the 99 uh, so-called righteous people who don't need repentance. Uh, Repentance is a mark of the Christian life for if you'd like to hear a seven minute uh, podcast on it. It's number 269 from Luke chapter 13. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. In other words, repentance is, is supposed to be part and parcel for Christianity. So the 99 righteous is is that even is it even possible absent Christ? And if so, where are these people? Can you imagine going to a church full of self-righteous People, in my opinion, there'd be nothing worse. And is that a church that you'd want to go to? And going to a church full of Christ-righteous people, in other words, sinners, saved by grace, humble, recognizing the Lord, appreciative of the Lord, there's nothing better. That's what Jesus came down for. So in the story today, we find Jesus drawing these tax collector Uh, no, sorry, tax collectors and sinners were being drawn by him, received. He even gave them an audience, if you will. And then uh, we find the story where uh, he goes after and pursues this person. So remember, Christmas, we rejoice that he's come. And in our story today, we find out three times it's mentioned that he rejoices uh, that we come to him. And how do we come to him? Repentance and sinners. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, a church had a advertising campaign and the campaign was, quote unquote, I found it. And people put literally put these signs in the yard. And I was thinking about that. So what did I find? I think what the sinner finds is lostness. I think the, the theologically a better thing to put on the sign was that he found me. And he found me when I was lost. He does the finding. The lost person, or even better, would be a sign that just said, hey, help, I'm lost. So God is the big mover in the story that he He finds. He's listening and watching for that lost sheep. He, can, he goes, he, he comes for the lost sheep. He pursues them. He finds them. 
then he shoulders them and brings them home. So back to the drummer boy. So what gift can I bring? And that is, what, what's the smile on Jesus' face, face on Christmas morning? What's the best box that he can open? What's the best present? And here it is. It's a sinner, which I think is everybody, because I think the 99 righteous, I don't, I don't know who those people are. So it's a sinner who's doing something, and that is repenting, one repentant sinner. So being a sinner and repenting are, are tied together. And then he's doing the big work. So we, we do the sinning part and the repentant part, and he pursues and finds and shoulders us and brings us home. So maybe that's you here today. If you haven't done it, uh, I remember a passage from 2 Corinthians 6, 2, that in a favorable time, I have listened to you. And in a day of salvation, I have helped you. So if this is you and you've never done this and you've never repented, you're probably going to need some help because it's a hard thing to do, in my opinion. And that's the bad news. The good news is if it's your day of salvation, the Lord's going to help you. He's going to be with you. He's going to help you. So for the rest of us, I think the point is Christmas is when we rejoice that he's come. But Christmas completed is we can actually make the Lord happy. He rejoices that we come. It's not that we get the joy. It's that he gets the joy. So let's change the song from joy to the world. How about joy to the Lord, the repentant sinner has come. I wish you all a Merry Christmas, whether you're listening this morning on Christmas morning or on any other morning. May this be the morning that you bring the Lord joy.